Hey there, this is a submission video for Games Done Quick. For the category All Cells No Out of Bounds slash TA or Orient Blind Force Definitive Edition. Uh, out of Bounds is your usual definitions, basically don't clip through walls. Teleport Anywhere is a glitch that has broken the game open completely, so we will be doing none of that in here. Um, the main attraction of no OB slash TA rule sets is that it's generally considered to be a good balance between full on glitchy stuff and movement. So, without further ado, I think we can just get going here. Um, there's a lot of time at the beginning to explain exactly what this is going on. Uh, the way this is going to work is that I will be playing back my personal best video as it's going to make it easier for me to both comment on it as well as um, uh, if necessary I can always just point stuff with my mouse which hopefully is visible is it? not sure Not sure if it is. Oh well. Oh well. In any case, um, if necessary, I can always slow down uh, anything. Uh, as far as the estimate is concerned, uh, please note that um, in case this gets accepted, I will be practicing the category and grinding it the personal best down a lot. And the run that is currently my PV is not that great either. It's probably what I would be expecting for a no reset setting. So I am probably entirely sure that I can finish the run in about 48, 49 minutes. All right, so with all that's out of the way, I think we can get going. So Orient the Blind Forest is a Metroidvania that was um, released in 2016. It was made, um, uh, so the way it was designed is that you basically enter another, um, you, you basically have no movement options at the start, uh, like here. Uh, all I can do is run and jump up walls, and as you get further and further into the game, you unlock more and more abilities that allow you to progress even further. So the first thing we're going to do is, after collecting this energy cell, which allows us to save the game as we just did right here, uh, we're going to get our first ability in the game. Sign as uh, this little ball of light down there is called, is going to be our companion for the run. Uh, normally there is a lot of dialogue going on in here, but we can skip all dialogue by turning the user interface off which is why most of the time we will be running um, like that. Uh, we will be using the UI though for a specific glitch called Save Anywhere, which I will come back to later, as well as when we need to monitor our health and energy count because we need to manage resources very carefully. So Sign, as you just saw, allows us to shoot at targets. It's an auto-aim. Uh, we can actually just use scroll wheel it's allowed within rule sets which is a good thing because it removes a lot of unnecessary mashing that would otherwise be really annoying actually i'm just going to <laughs> just going to mute this because hearing my own voice is really weird <laughs> So as we get our first keystones, um, we will be performing a glitch called the Ghost Door. So it turns out if you load your save while you have keystones into a door, uh, the door just disappears for a while. Uh, this saves about 4 seconds per door. Uh, and right here I just loaded my save again by taking a death inside this pool of poison water. As I mentioned again, um, we have three main resources that we need to manage very carefully. The first one being health, of course. Zero health means we die, obviously. Energy, because energy allows us to use some movement abilities and save the game. 
And the third one, uh, probably the least obvious one, is experience, because leveling up in this game is really powerful, and we will be using it uh, for several skips uh, inside the game. One of which is uh, pretty much necessary to finish the run. So as we get down uh, the Sunken Glades area, we get our second ability, Wall Jump. Uh, pretty explanatory, allows us to jump up walls. We have no stamina, so we can jump up walls infinitely as soon as long as the wall allows us to, uh, as in the wall's geometry. Like so. So now that we have Wall Jump, as well as our second energy cell, we can go ahead and proceed to not actually complete um, the Sunken Glades area. We will be coming back there later. Instead, we're going to go back to the beginning of the game and enter an optional area called Blackroot Burrows. The reason for that is, in this Blackroot Burrows area, also called BRB for short, there is a nobility called Dash, which obviously is something that we want in a speedrun. Should be noted that in this category we get all of the skills in the game even though we don't have to. Uh, some of those we could potentially skip but it would be really really slow so we don't actually do it. So there's a lot of cutscenes as well inside this game. Uh, however, there's a way to skip most of them called Save Anywhere, uh, which I will showcase right here. So it turns out by cancelling and proceeding on the same frame, you can trick the game into thinking you have closed this menu while you in fact have not. And that allows us to spend skill points anywhere. Spending a skill point saves the game. And what happens if you save inside a cutscene and reload? It turns out that we are able to skip the cutscene entirely. And we just skipped a 30-ish second cutscene and now we're entering BRP. Very dark cycle-based area. Uh, the cycles in there are mostly Technically not global, but kind of. And the way this is laid out is that we have to carry this orb uh, all the way up the area. And that's why we have to care about platform cycles. You can see me waiting for the, for the cycle I like right here. And something that is really important uh, as far as cycles that's concerned in this area is the laser cycle that is coming up. Uh, it is extremely tight, saves 8 seconds, which is not negligible at all. And there we go. It's not something that you can expect getting all the time. So once again, uh, keep a close eye on my EXP count because I want to be around what I am right now, which is not quite leveling up, but almost, because I will be using a time level up uh, shortly. I mentioned time level ups earlier. Uh, you saw me using a time level up to destroy some brambles on the way back from wall jump. Uh, turns out that leveling up also refills your health and energy, and we will be using that shortly. But before that, we have another save anywhere. Uh, this one's going to be a bit different because instead of skipping the entirety of the cutscene we want, we're only going to skip the first half because we are using the second half to stack two conceits together and allow us to move out of the area blind once we get the dash ability. By saving in this precise spot and carrying the orb to the altar where it's supposed to be. And right here we just skip the first half of the cutscene. And now, the ability we just leveled up is Rekindle, which allows us to reuse our saves. So we just did that to uh, skip the second half of the cutscene at a convenient timing, allowing us to cancel this cutscene and in turn to move out of the area completely blind. This can be really scary because if you fall down, the game is still going to autosave the game and you will be stuck in an endless loop of falling into spikes and dying. And right here, we are coming up to our next trick called Frankie Walk. This is the time level up I will be mentioning, um, oh, sorry, that I mentioned earlier. Because up ahead is a four energy door, and we currently have two energy. 
So the way this is going to work is we're going to put two energy into the door, level up off of this Fronky, and put another two energy into the door, sequence breaking into Moon Grotto about five minutes earlier than we were supposed to. This area right here is called Death Gauntlet because we just use all our energy to open up this door, which means that if we die here, we have to do Fronky Walk again, which is pretty slow. Thankfully, this run gets out just fine. And we can't quite use our energy yet because we have to open this door on the way down. Uh, another tight cycle coming up with those crushers. Um, I'm not sure if I get it here. I don't quite remember. Okay, I do. I do get it. Yeah, okay. We have to manipulate uh, the way the crushers um, spawn in order to make the cycle work. It's really tight. Another ghost door coming up. Pretty much every door is going to be ghost doored. Uh, it doesn't hurt to try. You can see me struggling to get an SA up in it uh, right here. Because we're going to uh, save anywhere SA for short uh, to get out of this tree. However, I think my PB does something different because I messed up the menuing. Yeah, okay. So I messed up the menu and closed the menu, which means I won't be able to do the blind movement out. But that's mostly fine. I just have to remember to get the right ability. And now we have double jump. Um, double jumping off walls give you uh, something people like to call wiggle jumps because of the way it looks. <laughs> I think it's a pretty accurate name. Two really big skips upcoming, the first one being grotto skips. Uh, we can wall jump off of a tiny piece of wall right here, and I bonk on the first try, but get it second try. It's not an easy jump at all, and here's baguette jump, shout out to the French community. <laughs> Another instance of saving inside a cutscene, except this time we're just going to rekindle. Uh, this prevents the rocks that uh, Gumo up here is supposed to throw down on us from spawning ever. So we can just kind of move through the area freely. And here's Gumo, he's frozen in place. And now that we have the water vein, we are going to take up a little detour through this gate that we opened to pick up an energy, uh, sorry, a health cell. And we are going to go through Moon Grotto in reverse so that we can access Ginza Tree. You can see a lot of sprites uh, <laughs> that are supposed to be loaded from the top right here. The game just kind of, kind of, kind of places them here because you're not supposed to go in from the bottom, of course. This split right here is probably one of the most technical in the runs because wall jumping, uh, optimizing wall jumping is incredibly hard and precise. Most notably a cycle that's coming up is getting bullied by the slime for a while. This cycle right here with the spinners up ahead, uh, it's really tight aims to um, dash before the spinner ever reaches the outside. Another rekindle skip. Uh, you can skip the this cutscene right here, but I kind of forgot to. That's fine. It's not too bad. And now we just entered Ginza Tree. One of the most technical areas in the game, probably. Um, because it's a very vertical area, and as I mentioned, wall jumping correctly is really hard, so moving vertically inside this game in general is really technical. You can see me uh, closely managing my health count because I don't have. Because I messed up the double jump blind movement, I have to adapt because saving does not give me health. You can see me getting the ability uh, that makes this happen. So I was supposed to have this ability all the way down to double jump tree, which explained my health count. This puzzle we can actually just complete this way. You don't actually need the block that's up top.
and here's the Ginza Tree Minibus. If you're really fast, you can do this guy in three cycles, but it's really hard. You also get affected by uh, RNG, uh, as in where the bus will spawn. That was average RNG, pretty much. Four cycle is not bad at all. It's mostly what you expect. Three cycle is a nice bonus, but it's not required per se. Another ghost door coming up. With those conveniently placed spikes. Uh, no blind movement out of this guy because it requires the use of Bash that we just got. So Bash is an ability that's pretty much uh, iconic in this game. Uh, pretty simple. You hit an enemy, you go in the direction, the enemy goes into the other direction. And we don't have quite a lot of time to breathe here because another glitch is coming up. So keep in mind that um, like ju just keep track of the location where we saved. And keep track of my keystone count right here. So you'll notice that I now have three keystones even though I was supposed to have zero. This is a glitch called key duping. It allows us to, uh, by saving far enough of the door and dying with the keystones inside of it, we can uh, replace, we can place the keys back both into the world and our inventory. This is uh, the first part of a really big sequence break that's coming up. Uh, because after we deal with this minibus, we are going to teleport out of Ginzo and go directly through Thornfeld Swamp. We will never be cleaning the water, and that is very important for later. But the reason we're able to do that is because of key duping, we can skip the, um, the swim that we have to do in order to open the keystone door to stomp. And we need stomp for uh, some cells, so we have to get this ability. So here's the first part of the skip of what makes it possible. Uh, the second part you're going to see soon enough. Uh, it's called the Swamp Entry Glitch uh, for obvious reasons. So it turns out that uh, breakable floors can be broken not only with stump, but also with projectiles. And we're going to take advantage of that using our good friend Ringo the Frog. The name Ringo the Frog will become, uh, will make sense soon, I promise. Also, the projectile phasing through the platform right here is not, uh, it's not the player's fault in any way. Uh, it's just something that happens sometimes due to physics. Another glitch coming up called Hyperspeed. Save during a, a dash, reload the save, and you have the dash speed. Like so. So you'll notice that sometimes when I bash an object, I will... So I mentioned that bash makes you go in the opposite direction. That's whatever you're bashing off of. This is true, except by doing a glitch called double bashing. Is It turns out that if you release a bash and bash again on the next frame, you can bash twice off of the same target. This allows you to follow what you're bashing off of. Like so. Unfortunately, uh, this game has quite a bit of an issue with lag, which means uh, we use scroll wheel binding for this, but uh, because of the way scroll wheel works, if you lag at the wrong frame, uh, it's going to completely mess up your double bashing. And you can see me trying to reset a fish cycle here. Uh, this is not an easy feat at all because the water is still poisoned even though it doesn't look like it. So here's an example of a double bash dropping. Uh, this is not the player's fault again. Uh, it's just something that happens because of random lag with how water shaders work. Like so, I barely survived here. <laughs> and grab the synergy cell.
So the name Ringo will become apparent right here. I will turn sound on for this. <laughs> Just as a drum solo the entire time. Great performance, Ringo. Thank you. <laughs> So all skills would normally just go to the left after getting the the cell by bashing Ringo, but all cells has to get those two cells, so we take the detour because it's worth it. Might as well just go through here. Once again, double bashing being annoying. So this is just a lot of type platforming. We're just opening this door that gives us access to a cell. We're not going to go through there quite yet, though. Uh, we'll be... So, all cells has two distinct phases, a um, beginning phases, where we get all of the skills that we need to complete the game and do it efficiently, and a cleanup phase, uh, where we just go through uh, all the areas that we visited and get everything that we couldn't get first. Not a lot of areas we actually full clear upon visiting first. Uh, I think there's only two, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, technically three. Another save anywhere here. This is just setting up for... Uh... Another save in Europe that's coming up, we will be skipping uh, the spirit tree cutscene. So the downside of save anywhere is that you can't quite see what's going on, but it's not that bad. So we just skipped a, a one minute cutscene or something. Just got the charge flame ability, which is not very useful. But we just got the air dash upgrade as well as the charge dash upgrade, which we just did. So charge dash is really fast. You zoom to an enemy or straight, uh, straight ahead and it allows us to do this glitch called a rocket jump. Basically, if you cancel upwards momentum um, from a, a charge dash, uh, you don't get decelerated. So we charge dash at an enemy that's above us and then jump instantly, like so. And another trick is coming up called fast dumpless. So up ahead are a bunch of rocks that we are supposed to knock down on top of Kuro's head so that uh, she lets us through. But instead we're going to use this spider shot, bash it at a very precise angle, run away to unload some rocks, and we barely have enough time right here to get this ability cell before the shot hits the rocks and we get warped into the cutscene. It's a really impressive trick. This is one of the only downtimes in the run, at this 20-ish second cutscene, where we get Glide. One of the most impressive rocket jumps. So up ahead is a trick called Sorrow Bash. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. We just kind of use this bird to break our way into Sorrow Pass early. Mess up the stomp on the ground, that's fine. You can see me play safe, because um, I'm not sure how the laser cycle works here. So again, all skills would normally just go through the main corridor and break its way up, but we have to get two cells. Uh, this ability cell right here and an energy cell. Sorrow Pass is one of those few areas that we uh, complete upon uh, visiting first. Normally we do a safety save here, but I was really low on energy, so I couldn't do it. This cycle can be really tight, uh, which is why we usually safety save, and the lasers are a one-hit kill, so can't really afford to die here. It's not that annoying of a cycle, but you never know. 
another sequence break. We're normally supposed to use the tumbleweed that's up top, but we can just kind of dash our way through. And bash through this crack right here and do a trick called the crazy juggle. So each of those charge dashes that you're seeing are a three frame window. We are canceling each and every charge dash to make sure none of them hit the frog so that the frog survives being juggled up because bash deals damage. And we can rocket jump off the frog, have it break the ceiling for us, and go get sunstone right away. Another save anywhere. This cutscene is about a minute and 30 seconds long, so we really do want to skip it. And now we are on our way to uh, mess up, whoops. <laughs> and get the charge jump ability. Pretty self-explanatory, it allows us to charge jump. This damage boost that I just did is really scary because anything, right? I have six health right now, so anything in this area will one-shot me now. Thankfully, it's not very bad. It's not a huge deal once you get used to it, but still. Those spikes can be really scary. Taking another detour to get a, our final cell in Sorrow Pass, which thankfully is a health cell, which allows, which is why I can afford doing this damage boost because it's not a big deal. We get refilled right after. And here's the meteor kick. So sometimes uh, you might notice that um, I do a lot of charge dashes. So this is a good opportunity to explain as we enter Misty Woods, which a uh, really movement heavy area. All of this that you're seeing is a combination of charge dashing, rocket jumping, and charge jumping like so. So the way charge dash works is that normally once you charge dash, it costs one energy. However, if we cancel a charge dash before its end, uh, most of the time it's by bashing an enemy, but we can also stomp uh, and follow it through by a double jump usually. That's called a stomp cancel. We can actually refund that energy and this allows us to charge dash all around. Which is why I think a blind forest movement is so interesting. Because there's a lot of routing involved with like where you're going to spend energy. Like so you can you can see I have my UI turned on right here so I can monitor energy counts. Um, you can see that each time I stomp I lose energy and then it's instantly refunded. That's part of the um, the cancelling mechanic that I mentioned. So up ahead is a mini boss. Thankfully we have a really quick kill strat to deal with it. Like so that was the mini boss. Charge dash is really powerful, and in combination with charge jump, we can do a tremendous amount of damage. So right now we are doing a similar thing to Blackroot Burrows where we have to carry an orb to the altar that's all the way to the entrance of Misty Woods. 
we cannot spend any energy here. This is really important because we will be using our energy for a trick that's right after, which is why we can't charge flame to clear out this uh, slime goop. But thankfully, we made it through safely. Uh, a similar cutscene skip as Blackfoot Burrows, once again, uh, two part cutscene, we're skipping the two parts this time with the rekindle. And now we're moving out of Misty Woods completely blind. We'll turn on sound for this. So right now we are on the teleporter from Valley of the Wind right next to where we picked up the feather ability. And we're going to start the revisit segment. Uh, I can notice a mistake here. I forgot to save to refill my energies, which means I could not do the meteor kick uh, to, this, to this ability cell. It's not that big of a deal. You <laughs> can see me looking for energy to place a save down here. There we go. <laughs> Taking a death here. A detour to get this cell. Uh, there's a health cell to the right here. <laughs> Taking the, the safe route. And then I just got mad and decided to save anyway. <laughs> Another really big save anywhere. Uh, this one stays about two minutes. This cutscene is really long. And now we have light grenade. So back in Misty Woods, we picked up climb, which is not very useful by itself, but if we throw a grenade right before we charge up off a wall on the frame before, we get this called a grenade jump. It is obviously extremely fast. It's the fastest way that we have to move through open areas. Also, it does not cost any energy because the grenade normally costs energy to cast, but uh, grenade jumping cancels that grenade, so it doesn't actually get thrown. And now we're going to lower Blackwood Burrows to pick up some cells now that we have the grenade ability that allows us to go through. So that was really weird right here. It, it was a graphical glitch that uh, made me misread the cycle. Uh, I'll probably just play it much safer. All cells tends to be a very punishing category because of, the, uh, because of that. We don't save often, so death can be really costly. Thankfully, most of the time we have a lot of resources, so we don't actually die, but there's always the occasional uh, one-hit kill laser, this one. You can see me bash off a light grenade, uh, another really cool utility. Those spikes up top are a one hit kill as well. You can see me dying to them here. Which is why I safety save right next to them. So I mentioned earlier uh, that we would not be completing Ginza Tree and that in turn all the water is poisoned. This is going to come back into play right here. I have been spending all my points into the blue ability tree because I can get Charge Dash and I can get Ultra Defense which halves the poison damage from water. And keep a close eye on my health count right here.
So this is Lost Grove Swim. Uh, it's extremely tight. Um, it's the reason we have to pick up that many ability points because we need ultra defense. It barely lines up, which I think is really impressive in and of itself. So now we're done with Lost Grove. Uh, all we have to do is get out of the area. Thankfully, there's a teleporter nearby. Uh, however, in between us and the teleporter, teleporter, sorry, there is a cutscene trigger. The cutscene is a minute and a half long, uh, but we can just kind of grenade jump over the trigger. Picked up this EXP as well and level up off of it, which is really convenient. So I don't quite level up here, but that's not a big deal. You <laughs> can see me struggling to get the EXP I need. There we go, finally leveled up. And now we're going to clean up Valley. So we will not be getting anything uh, else skills-wise uh, starting from now. All we're going to do is clean up some areas and get some cells. Another really long poison swim coming up called Valley Long Swim. Uh, this one's a little bit easier than Lost Grove because we don't have to do as much double bashes. Remember, double bashes can sometimes be really uh, annoying to deal with. But it's still not that easy. Um, we have to save a lot uh, to heal up. Each save gives us two health back thanks to an ability from the blue tree. So we're going to take a lot of deaths because dying resets the save timer, so we just kind of save a lot. I can see me struggling a bit, but not that, not that much, it's fine. Uh, still barely getting off though. Okay, we're through. can see the triple stomp cancels here from um, from triple jump allows us to do that. That's pretty cool. Saving uh, while on the way to get some health back because uh, the next area that we're going to fall on runes is really annoying and it can kill us pretty quickly. So. I'm just making sure I don't uh, take death for no reason here. We can do a lot of saves on the way. Uh, thanks to another blue tree upgrade, saves only cost half an energy now, so it's not as a, it's not as big of a deal energy wise as it used to be in the start of the run. Uh, some spaghetti here, that's fine. There we go. So the sole reason we go to Forlorn Runes is to get one single health cell. And we're going to skip some cutscenes here. Uh, we just charge dashed and our hitbox extended through the door for one frame triggering the cutscene. And we just saved anywhere this cutscene. And now we're going to save anywhere. Uh, we're not going to reload just yet because uh, skipping this doesn't bring us much. This is the only part that we can save anywhere. Another cutscene trigger through the door here. And this area up ahead is really hard. Uh, we have to carefully navigate our way through some really tight layers of cycles.
three cycles to manage at the same time total. Uh, really cool grenade jump here that I missed, so I just went for the backup. It's no big deal. You can see how tightly choreographed uh, charge dashing is right here. Just the position was just slightly off and it messed up everything. So now we're done with full on runes, we're going to uh, TP back to all the early game areas, uh, starting from Moon Grotto. This is just a really long cleanup segment with a lot of really tight platforming. Um, a lot of things can go wrong here because this is really tight movements, which is why I think this game makes for interesting races uh, and especially this category because there is so much that can go wrong that it's never quite called. Um, if a race gets close at this point and no one dies, it makes for one of the most entertaining races. So a save anywhere right here, this one's a little bit special. Um, when you load a save in the air, the game just places you near the on the ground that's below you and we can use that to drop through lasers and skip all the puzzle that we have to deal with here. And we can also catch this Crusher Cycle, which we could not catch before, so that's also a benefit. The cool Grain Jump up Moon Grotto here. And now we're done with Moon Grotto, we can just uh, make our way back through Death Gauntlet uh, to Glades. Right here I was really low on energy. Despite having a lot of energy, we still have to monitor our accounts very carefully. Your cool grenade jump. This one's is so fast that the area doesn't have time to load properly. And this is why uh, we have to monitor energy count. Grenade costs energy, so if we end up in front of um of a cell that is grenade locked and that we cannot get, it is a really bad situation. Thankfully we got through just fine. Something really interesting about how cells work is that uh, if you stand in the air for long enough, um, the game kinds of, kind of forgets that uh, we have to that it has to play the you just got the cell animation because it, it waits for Ori to be on the ground before it plays it. But if you stay in the air for about five seconds, the game just forgets that it exists. Safety save right here. This laser can be really scary if you're out of energy. You can see right here, uh, the game waits for Ori to be on the ground to play both. It's actually going to stack those two cutscenes, um, which is pretty cool, I feel. So we're done with cleaning up Sunken Glades, now we're going through Hollow Grove. Uh, this is actually the order we're supposed to go through the area in. Uh, when we first went through it, uh, at the start of the run, we went through in reverse, like we did with Moon Grotto. Really cool grenade jumps coming up. This cell down here, affectionately called Butter Cell. Uh, you can see that the game right here never plays the you just got the cell animation because uh, Ori's been in the water for so long. The game kind of forgets. Yeah, this one I, I think I try again. Yeah, okay. 
allows us to rocket jump off of this spider. It's really precise, so I didn't expect to get it. This movement is really cool. And you can see all the energy that's following me thanks to Ultra Magnet. He's getting sniped all the time. I love it. So I just went past a 100 EXP orb. Those are not required uh, as a completion criterion for all cells. All we need to get is the ability, health, and energy cell. We don't actually need. Um, I was just saying, we, we don't actually need the 100 DXP orbs and all that. 100% is going to collect them though. So, Mount Haru, final dungeon of the game. Um, all skills would normally go straight to the end here, but we have a detour that we need to take for this uh, one energy cell that's up top. And we're going to skip a cutscene that's about 30 seconds long by using a trait called Game Storage. So if you menu really fast, the game gets in a weird state where you're both inside the cutscene and playing at the same time, which allows us to play while the cutscene is happening. And while we get through this last cell, we're going to do the final save anywhere of the run. Uh, this save anywhere is going to get us uh so during the this cutscene of the lava flowing down ori is placed near the main entrance of mount horu turns out if you go through this main entrance on the same frame that the on the first frame that the game loads the game warps you at the end of the dungeon this is called door warp it is extremely precise uh, i think i get a third try or something in this uh, third try is about what you'd expect. And there it is. This is the end of Mount Haru. Uh, another game storage coming up called Warm Skip. Uh, good example of moving while cutscenes are going on. Uh, we're going to do uh, the first half of the escape blind. And we're through. We're too far now. The cutscene won't play. Pretty cool granny jump here. You can see I have a ton of health and energy. Uh, this is normally a really spooky area for all skills, but all skills doesn't need to care because we have so much health and energy at this point. And we get, thankfully, we get an energy cell right before warmth, so we don't need to care about resources here. Final grenade job coming up. This one's going to stack two cutscenes, saving about 40 seconds. Pretty precise positioning on that wall here, and that is GG. Time is not quite coming up yet. Uh, there is still a little bit of movement where we will be in control of Naru and we'll have to go um, to the right for about seven seconds. I will be announcing time when it comes up, of course. can see me mashing jump to just do something called near hops. It's actually slower, but I like doing it anyway. And that's Ori in the Blind Forest. So yeah, I think I've said all um, I wanted to say. So this is a submission as a race with uh, Ronnie, who is currently also actively running the category. We are both going for rank 2, I believe, on the leaderboards. Um, so it should make for a really interesting race. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed uh, this submission video and thank you for considering us.